Welcome to this lecture about the Norman distribution, also known as the Gaussian distribution, which is the most common type of distribution that is used in statistics. In this video, we'll look at how the Norman distribution arises and how it can be used to predict a fraction of people in a population that are taller or shorter than a certain value. We'll also have a look at the so-called standard Norman distribution. We'll start with a simple example that will help us to understand how a normal distribution arises. Suppose we have nine independent individuals in a population and that we know the body height of each one of them. Let's first sort the individuals based on the body heights. We see that most individuals have about the same height, whereas a few individuals are very short or tall. Let's make five groups based on their heights. In this first group, we have one individual that has a height between 150 and 160 centimeters. Whereas in the second group, we have two individuals with a height between 160 and 170 centimeters, and so forth. Based on these five groups, we can construct the so-called histogram by plotting a rectangle with a height that corresponds to the number of individuals in each range. For example, this rectangle shows that we have one individual that has a height between 150 and 160 centimeters, whereas this rectangle shows that we have two individuals in the range between 160 and 170. We see that we have three individuals in the range 170 to 180, two in the range 180 to 190, and only one person in the range between 190 and 200. We have just created a histogram that shows the distribution of the heights as discrete intervals. Let's try and draw a curve that fits to the bars of the histogram. Note that the curve is belly shaped, which is the characteristic shape of the normal distribution. A normal distribution has two parameters, the mean and the standard deviation. If we calculate the mean and standard deviation of the heights of the nine individuals in the population, we'll get the following values of these two parameters. The parameter mu represents the mean of the normal distribution, which in this case is equal to 175. This means that the average body height of the individuals in the population is 175 centimeters. The value mu determines the location of the curve on the x-axis. For example, if you increase the value mu to 190, the curve will move to the right and center at 190, whereas if we decrease the value of mu to 160, the curve will move to the left. Sigma represents the standard deviation, which determines the width of the curve. If we reduce the standard deviation to, for example, 7, we see that the curve has a reduced width and a higher peak. If we instead increase the standard deviation to, for example, 20, we see that the curve has an increased width but a much lower peak. It is clear from changing the values of these two parameters that the following parameter values create a curve that fits quite well to the bars of the histogram. Note that the height of the curve has been adjusted to fit the histogram, where the area below the curve is greater than one in this example. For a normal distribution curve, the area below the curve is always 1. The y-axis represents the density of the curve. We can think of the density as the fraction of the area below the curve for one unit on the x-axis. In this example, we can see that about 2% of the individuals in this population are expected to have a height between 163 and 164 centimeters because the height of the curve at 163.5 is approximately equal to 0.02. Since the width of this rectangle is 1 and its height is 0.02, the area of this rectangle is 0.02, which means that it covers about 2% of the total area under the curve. Note that we cannot use the curve to figure out the proportion of individuals that are, for example, exactly 160 centimeters, because no one can be exactly 160 centimeters if you measure with infinitely high precision. To ask for the probability is to find a person who is exactly 160 centimeters tall would be the same thing as asking 
what the probability is to find a person who is 160.0000000000000000. Well, you get the idea. The probability to find a person who is exactly 160 centimeters is approximately equal to zero. Therefore, we should use the curve to calculate the proportion of individuals that are expected to fall within a certain range. For example, in a range between 160 and 161 centimeters. For example, we can use the curve to get the rough estimation of the proportion of individuals that are between 190 and 200 centimeters in the population. The width of this rectangle is 10, and the height is about 0.006. The area of this rectangle is therefore 10 times 0.006, which is equal to 0.06. This means that we expect that about 6% of the population have a height in the range of 190 to 200 centimeters. Similarly, we can see that the area of this rectangle is about 0.25, which means that about 25% of the individuals in the population are expected to have a height in the range of 180 to 190 centimeters. However, we can perform much more accurate calculations if we use a software tool. By using a software, I computed this area to 0.24. The following notation can be used to represent the area of this part of the curve. In other words, what is the probability of observing a value between 180 and 190 based on our normal distribution. To calculate the area between 180 and 190 by using a software tool, we can first compute the area to the left of 190, which is about 0.93. In other words, the probability of observing a person that is shorter than 190 centimeters is about 93%. Then we calculate the area to the left of 180, which is about 0.69. This means that the probability of serving a random person in a population that is shorter than 180 cm is about 69%. The area between 180 and 190 in a normal distribution with a mean of 175 and a standard deviation of 10 is therefore 0 0.93 minus 0 0.69 which is about 0 0.24. This means that we expect that about 24% of the people in this population have a height between 180 and 190 centimeters. In other words, the probability that we observe a person with a body height between 180 and 190 centimeters is about 24%. Note that 0 0.24 is quite close to our previous estimate of 0 0.25, where we used a very rough estimate based on fitting a rectangle to the curve. Similarly, we can use the software to calculate the probability of observing a person that is taller than 180 cm, which is about 31%. Note that this area can be calculated by 1 minus the area to the left of 180, since the total area under the curve is always 1. In this example, the area to the left is 0 0.69, and the area to the right of 180 is therefore 1 minus 0 0.69, which is about 0 0.31. The probability that x is greater than 180 is equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less than 180. From the previous lecture about the standard deviation, we know that one standard deviation away from the mean includes approximately 68% of the data points, given that the data is normally distributed. We know that the standard deviation is 10, and that the mean is 175. If we subtract the standard deviation from the mean, we get a value of 165. And if we add the standard deviation to the mean, we get a value of 185. Thus, without using any software tool, we know that the probability of serving a person that has a height between 165 and 185 in this population is about 68%, since we know that the standard deviation is 10. One standard deviation away from the mean covers about 68% of the area of the normal distribution. This is the reason why we can say that one standard deviation away from the mean covers about 68% of the data, but only if the data is normally distributed.
The following mathematical function can be used to depict the normal distribution for different values of x, where x in our case is the height in centimeters. Sigma is the standard deviation, and mu is the mean. For example, let's say that we want to calculate the value of this function when x is equal to 185. According to the height of the curve, it seems like this value should be about 0 0.024. To get a more accurate value, we can plug in the value for the mean, 175, the standard deviation, which is 10, and the value of x, which is 185. We see that the value is calculated to about 0 0.0242, which corresponds to the height of the curve when x is equal to 185. We can interpret this value as this is about 2.4% chance to observe a person with a height in the range of 184.5 to 185.5, since this range corresponds to one unit around 185. We now have a look at the so-called standard normal distribution, which has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. This distribution is commonly used to extract critical values that are used in different statistical tests. For example, if we move one standard deviation away from the mean, we cover approximately 68% of the area. In a standard normal distribution, the area between negative 1 and 1 therefore covers about 68% of the area. Whereas the bounds that cover approximately 95% of the area in a standard normal distribution are negative 1.96 and 1.96. Note that each tail covers 2.5% of the area. Together, these two tails cover 5% of the area of the standard normal distribution. In statistics, we generally like to be 95% sure about things. In other videos about different statistical tests, you will see that the values 1.96 and 0 0.05 are commonly used in statistics. We'll now look at the relationship between our original normal distribution and the standard normal distribution. This is our original normal distribution of the body heights, with the mean of 1 and 75 and a standard deviation of 10. Whereas this is the standard normal distribution, which has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Let's say that we'd like to calculate the probability of finding a person that is shorter than 180 centimeters, which means that we need to calculate the area to the left of 180. We can standardize the height by subtracting mu from x and divide by the standard deviation, which gives us the location of the corresponding z value, also called z score, in the standard normal distribution. If you subtract the mean from 180, and divide by the standard deviation, which is 10, we get a value of 0 0.5. This shows that the value 180 is located 0 0.5 standard deviations to the right hand side of the mean in the standard normal distribution. Note that the z score of 0 0.5 can be interpreted as a person with a height of 180 centimeters is 0 0.5 standard deviations taller than the mean. The area in this case is about 0 0.69, which is identical for the two distributions. Thus, the probability of finding a person that is shorter than 180, or x is smaller than 180, is the same as the probability that the z-score is smaller than 0 0.5 in a standard normal distribution. Similarly, a value of for example 160 corresponds to a value of negative 1.5 in the standard normal distribution. A person who is 160 cm tall is therefore 1.5 standard deviations shorter than the mean. We can also do the opposite, which means that based on the z-score, we can calculate the corresponding x-value. If we solve this equation for x, we'll get the following equation. For example, with this equation, we can calculate the height of a person that is, for example, 1.5 standard deviations shorter than the mean. If you plug in a z-score of negative 1.5, as well as the standard deviation and the mean, we see that the person with 1.5 standard deviations shorter than the mean has a body height that corresponds to 160 centimeters. 
This was the end of this lecture about the normal distribution. Thanks for watching.